All right. Good morning, everyone. Today, my team and I will be presenting on our capstone project, the U.S. Stock Market Analysis Tool. So please note that this is not to be taken as financial advice. So going into a quick overview, we will introduce the team and the scope of the project, cover some exploratory questions and we formulated and how we plan to answer these questions through a research process. We will then cover the machine learning models that we tested for future stock price predictions, transition to our Power BI report for visualizations and results and recommendations. We'll then wrap up with a conclusion and a short Q&A session at the end. So jumping into the introduction. Hello, my name is Ted Corby. I'm part of the Twin Cities cohort. Uh, I went to Hammond University and achieved a Bachelor of Science in Applied Physics. And I'm uh, Dalton Bodie. I'm currently in the Milwaukee area, um, and I got my Master's in Nanophysics at Arizona State University uh, just recently. Good morning. My name is Annie Kittendorf. I'm also part of the Milwaukee cohort. I graduated from the University of Michigan with a Bachelor of Science in Biopsychology, Cognition, and Neuroscience in Evolutionary Anthropology. And I'm Amy Yukis. I'm part of the Milwaukee cohort, and I graduated from Texas Women's University with an MLS in library science. All righty. So now that we've met the team, let's go into the project focus. So what we wanted to do was examine the U.S. domestic stock market and its top five sectors as represented by Vanguard Index ETFs. So there's two ways we wanted to go about this, by using predictive analysis and traditional data analysis. So for predictive analysis, we want to use time series ML models like Arimax, Surimax, and LSTM. And then we want to back that up with um, analyzing the economic feature trends through the traditional tools like correlation maps. Uh, here are some exploratory questions that we used uh, or we wanted to answer through our research process. Uh, so we mainly focused on how historical market prices uh, correlated with historical national revenue and economic features across the U.S. economy. Uh, we were also interested in the investment risk and return across the different sectors. And then how our uh, machine learning models, uh, like testing re uh, research tests and comparing them uh, when predicting the future stock prices. So the main way, our main index that we focused on for this was the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. So what is it? It's a uh, index fund that encompasses over 4,100 stocks of all sizes that are part of the uh, New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ portfolios. And why we chose it is because a vast majority of the portfolio is US based. So it correlates well with our um, desired economic features. Uh, it is important to note that a, uh, the index contains stocks in numerous industries, uh, which provides us with a well-rounded perception on a given economic features impact on the market as a whole. And here are several sector funds that we used in our analysis, VGT, VCR, VHT, VFH, and VIS, all part of Vanguard system. And I'll be handing it off to Annie to go over our research process. Great. Thanks, Ted. So as Ted outlined, our group had several exploratory questions that we wanted to answer. But to do so, we first needed to find relevant data. So our project sources data from three main sources. Stock prices were sourced from the Alpha Vantage stock APIs, and economic feature data were sourced from the Alpha Vantage economic indicators APIs. All API data were gathered on a monthly timescale. Data about the US revenue is gathered from the annual survey of state government finances tables, and that's published by the United States Census Bureau. This data was gathered on a yearly timescale. So once we had the data, we needed to use a number of different technologies to actually work with it. A vast majority of the work was done using Microsoft Azure services, as well as Python coding. Python code was implemented in Azure Databricks, and all data files were housed in Azure storage data lakes and storage accounts. We used Apache Kafka messaging as well with the API data so we could produce and consume the live stream data so it's updated. Once the data was consumed, it was transformed and loaded into a SQL database that we created for this project. This database was also configured so that it required valid credentials to access it. We used data factories and pipelines to automate our Databricks to run every 12 hours. Additionally, we used Python to create machine learning models, as Ted mentioned. This was done on our local machines in Jupyter Notebooks, though, so that we wouldn't overload our class's shared computing resources. Finally, we connected our SQL database to Power BI to create visualizations, and we also used Python scripting in Power BI to load in our machine learning models so we could create visualizations of those predictions as well. And Amy's gonna tell us more about those models that we created. 
Thank you, Annie. In our machine learning exploration, we aimed for short-term predictions. So the train size for this project was 95% and the test size was 5%. For all the models we used, economic features to predict VTI prices. Our features, after accounting for multicollinearity, include interest, inflation, treasury yield, unemployment, and consumer sentiment. Each of our group members chose one to two models to research, fine tune, and test. These are the models that our team decided to focus on, with the last three models being the top contenders. Starting with linear regression and lasso CV, they both have their own merits as, model, as models, but at the end of the day, they didn't work well with time series data. As such, we moved on and researched models that did work with our data. And starting with REMEX, it stands for Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average with exogenous features. It combines autoregressive and moving average models, handles non-stationary data, and uses exogenous features. So REMEX, as you can probably tell from the name, is related to AREMEX. It is similar to the previous model in most facets, but it includes hyperparameters that take seasonality into account. LSTM is long, short-term memory. It has univariate and multivariate capabilities and is an artificial reoccurrent neural network. We will now go through the results of our model exploration and some recommendations with Dalton. Hey, thanks, Amy. Um, so uh, first we're gonna kind of go walk through uh, our dashboard. Um, so um, first uh, we uh, just have a one, uh, slide that kind of highlights the, uh, the VTI stock and it just allows the viewer to get acquainted with the VTI stock, um, but we will not be talking about uh, this slide for our results of the, this presentation. Um, what uh, we'll start off with is this graph. Um, it looks to see if the VTI stocks can be used as an economic indicator by comparing them to another economic indicator in the US total revenue. Um, as we can see, the VTI stock prices uh, uh, tend to follow the general trends of the U.S. total revenue, um, in which they're both impacted by the uh, Great Recession that occurs in 2008, and then generally, generally uh, increase um, over time thereafter. Um, and then uh, with the correlation heat map here, uh, we wanted to see which economic features had strong correlations with uh, these index funds on a monthly basis. Um, and as we can see, uh, the top three features here were the 10-year uh, treasury uh, maturity rate, the retail trade and the unemployment rate. Um, and with these, we'd recommend using these features to make uh, predictions on future stock prices. Um, next, we'll look at the uh, scatter plots and kernel density estimate plots to help identify clusters of data points uh, to signify relationships between any of the two stocks. Um, and there aren't any major clusters uh, in these kernel density estimate plots, um, uh, which that there aren't any major clusters that deviate from the mean percent change in the stock prices, um, suggesting that these index funds are more uh, intended for long-term investment plans. Um, now, just as an example, if there was say a blob in the upper right-hand corner of one of these graphs, um, that would suggest that both stocks have a, a chance of increasing significantly, um, meaning you might you know, strike gold uh, on occasion um, if you're invested in those um, portfolios or in those stocks. Um, now, to kind of further the point that these are more for long-term investment plans, we wanted to look at the risk versus expected returns for each of these stocks. Um, and just to have some uh, background info information on these, uh, these values were percentages of, the, uh, of your initial investment. So these are fractions of a percentage. Uh, so that just goes to show that um, these index funds are intended as a low risk, low reward types of investments. Um, so yeah, that's uh, once again, they're more uh, geared towards long-term investment plans. Um, and then here uh, we uh, have our machine learning model comparisons. Um, uh, I should note that we only tested these on the VTA, VTI stock prices. Um, but looking here, you can see that the uh, linear regression and the uh, lasso CV regression models did uh, relatively Poorly, while in comparison, the REMA, SREMAX, and LSTM models did, uh, did excellent in predicting the actual stock prices. Um, so if we just look at those, um, we can see that the SREMAX uh, seems to have the most accurate uh, predictions, um, also indicated by the mean squared error, um, uh, as seen in the upper right here. 
Um, so with the with that, uh, we'd recommend using either the ARIMA, Srimax, or LSTM as machine learning models to predict future stock prices. Um, and now we will go into uh, the conclusion of our presentation. So here let me um, quickly this. So um, just to kind of wrap up all the recommendations that we made, um, we would suggest that the Vanguard's VTI index uh, could be used as a reliable U.S. economic indicator. Um, we would also say that the SRIMAX, ARIMA, and LSTM models were um, excellent in predicting Vanguard VTI stock prices. Um, in consideration to the Vanguard ETS representing the top five sectors in the U.S., um, they're all low risk, low reward. Um, and uh, as we saw with the risk versus return scatter plot, the industry with the, the highest returns on investment would be technology and information, um, and the industry with the lowest risk would be healthcare. Um, and when it comes to correlations between the top five sectors and the economic features, um, we would say that the unemployment rate, the 10 year uh, constant maturity rate, and the retail trade are the strongest features, uh, the, the features that show the strongest correlations. Um, and with that, um, if you have any questions, uh, uh, if, you, if you want to explore more information on our project and uh, kind of uh, the steps that we took to um, finalize this uh, project, uh, you can go to our GitHub repository for more information. Um, and uh, let's get started with the Q&A session. Excellent job, you guys. And I have to say it is not relevant to the actual data work you did, but the presentation you built is beautiful. It was really well broken down. I just loved the way you presented that information. So um, really neat, you know, packaging of the information that you um, worked on. So I'm, I'm curious. Um, I, I think we have now seen a, what, two or, or three stock related, right? All different, very different flavors. Um, you guys went through a lot of different models. Um, why did you... Uh, decide to go through so many different models when I think it was the ARIMA is kind of like the, the the standard one, right, that we heard of initially. So what led you to picking those? I think it was six and then working through that. Yeah, I can take this one. Um, so in our cohort training, we learned um, basic introductions to machine learning models, but we didn't explore fully how to deal with time series data. Um, and that is the kind of data that stock prices are and we are working with. And so in our research process, we as a team decided to just explore what are even the options for working with time series data. So as Amy mentioned, we each decided to find a model and test it out and work with it. And from that, we all were able to create pretty solid models. And so with that work that we had done, we wanted to showcase how each of them worked and that became a part of our project to compare those different models. Very cool, it was fascinating. So thank you for that. What was the biggest challenge you guys faced as a team? Let's start with Dalton. Um, I think initially uh, kind of figuring out uh, how to represent the, the stock market as a whole and how to compare economic features to, to stock data. Um, so initially we wanted to try and uh, get the most granular uh, versions of the stock prices um, to try and maybe see them on a daily scale. Um, but we were kind of limited with the fact that the economic features were recorded on a monthly basis. Um, so we had to kind of scale back our um, the, the uh, data for the stock prices and how we gathered that um, to only be on a, a monthly scale. Um, so that that's kind of, I'd say, the biggest challenge we faced, but uh, um, also trying to figure out how to um, classify each of the sectors, I think was also a, kind of a major challenge that we faced, but we used the index funds as uh, key indicators for those. Anyone else have anything to add? I think uh, Dalton nailed it pretty good. Um, yeah, it was pretty much just making our time time frames uh, work for the data. Uh, it really we wanted to get down as close to the day as possible, but with the data, like we couldn't 
imputing the data uh, throughout wouldn't be, I guess, realistic to how the market actually reacts. So we'd be, I guess, shooting yourself in the foot with that, so. Amy, I saw you raise your hand as well. Did you have something additional? Oh, um, just something off to the side. We had um, a bit of a debate about which stock we should look at in the beginning because uh, we were using economic factors that were primarily uh, domestic and related to the United States. So we had to find an ETF that was primarily domestic, but glad we settled on VTI. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting um, nuance to that, right? That I, I wouldn't have uh, naturally thought of. So very, very interesting. And Vanguard obviously is the big name. So is that why you guys just selected Vanguard as the ETF? Very cool. If you could go back two and a half weeks, would you do anything different? Would you start differently, plan differently, tackle a totally different subject? I think one thing that our group has talked about exploring um, is finding other ways or other features that we could try out for our models. Um, as we mentioned, our time scale has been a challenge throughout this project, but all of our features that we are putting into the model are contemporary with the outcome, the VTI prices. So those um, testing values that we showed, that is testing on a subset of our historical data. So while that provides valuable information still about the stock market, it doesn't lend itself well to actually creating real life future predictions. So I think it would be fun for us to explore even you know, offsetting the temporal resolutions of our features or exploring other features that we could use um, to actually create those future predictions. Excellent. Well, congratulations, you guys. This was a, an excellent project, really well done. And also, you know, as I said before, really um, nice presentation too. That was a, a, a great um, silver, silver lining or, or bow on the package, if you will. I love that. So congratulations, you did it. Sit back and relax. 